Ladies and gentlemen, this is an emergency broadcast of the Michael Savage Show. We all know what's going on. I want to stick one thing that I've written for you. Be strong. God made you. God loves you. Just take strength right now. Take strength and hope from within because it's going to get much worse today before it gets better. And instead of talking about politics for the moment, I'd like to just read a prayer for peace, if you don't mind, because I think that's all we can do is pray that cooler heads prevail in this world. I'm going to read a prayer. I hope that you appreciate it. And I'd like you to send me on Twitter, as we have said on Twitter, uh, requests for you from peace, for peace. Let me just turn off that binging sound that's going off on my screen. It's a rough day for all of us. We've all feared this day would come, and it's only just begun. So here we go. Lord of peace, divine ruler to whom peace belongs, master of peace, creator of all things. May it be thy will to put an end to war and bloodshed on earth and to spread a great and wonderful peace over the whole world so that nations shall not lift up sword against nation, shall they learn war anymore. Help us and save us all and let us cling tightly to the virtue of peace. Let there be a truly great peace between every person and their fellow and between husband and wife and let there be no discord between people even in their hearts. Let us never shame any person on earth, great or small. May it be granted unto us to fulfill thy commandment to love thy neighbor as thyself with all our hearts and souls and bodies and possessions. And let it come to pass in our time as it is written, and I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. I will drive the wild beasts from the land, and neither shall the sword go through your land. God who is peace, bless us with peace. Amen. And thank you for listening. Now I can end the stream right now, folks. Or we can just sit and watch the unfolding of what we pray is not going to be Armageddon in real time. On my right, I'm not watching Fox. I'm not watching CNN. I'm watching breaking news out of uh, England, Sky News. Sirens are heard in Jerusalem as drones expected. They're about to arrive. Earlier, I tweeted that the drones were just a beginning, a feign, a, a softening up, a touching, and they'd be followed by cruise missiles. 40 minutes later, cruise missiles followed the drones as I predicted. Certain things I'm never wrong about. Certain things I could see that others don't see as clearly, except those perhaps in military command posts. So what do I see coming next? I don't see anything coming next. Right now it's in play. We don't know how bad the drone and cruise missile attack is going to be. And we don't know how reactionary Israel is going to have to be to survive. Because if Israel is swarmed by a thousand drones out of Lebanon, because Hezbollah, which is controlled by Iran, will now launch their attacks from the north as well. Israel could be overrun and overwhelmed by tens of thousands of rockets and missiles, and God only knows what they're liable to do. They could go to the Samson. Uh, you know what the Samson is. We're not talking about the Abraham Accords. We're talking about the Samson Protocol, which is the last, the last protocol, which is using their nuclear weapons. Uh, and if Israel, should God forbid, launch a nuclear strike against the mullahs in Tehran, what will happen next? You want to go there? Because nobody knows what would, ha what would happen next. Who would join the fray? We already know Iraq is in the war. So we have Iran. We have Iraq, as expected. Who's next? Which Muslim nation will come to their senses and pray for peace? Egypt, perhaps? Perhaps not. We don't know. There's not more than any mortal man can say right now. We are living in strange and deadly times. We can point fingers and lay a lot of blame on Joe Biden for his weakness, for running out of Afghanistan and leaving all those weapons. We can go all the way back to Obama, who I told you when I was on the radio, when we sent a, our latest drone, a huge drone the size of a Cessna aircraft, had been sent to Iran and landed by accident in Iran. Do you remember that or not? I said, there are no accidents like this. Our latest in technology was sent to Iran. It arrived like a new Buick from a showroom. How? How? So they're using that all advanced technology from America to develop their drones. This is what went on. Israeli military sounds, sirens in multiple locations right now, breaking news on Sky News. I'm sure you're seeing it on your news source. The uh, drones are about to start hitting in Israel and the cruise missiles, and uh, I can stay with you and we can just talk and 
wrap if you wish. If you want to send me some of your comments, I'm going now to uh, you on Twitter. I asked you to send me ideas for prayers because that's all I think we get, we've got left right now. I said going live on YouTube now. Send me messages on Twitter for prayers for peace and comments to speak. I think you can actually see my show live on on uh, Twitter as well because I put up my YouTube channel, my link. So if you click on that YouTube channel, you can watch me on YouTube or on YouTube. But I'm going to look at your your prayers for peace. Heather, Heathen Hammer says, let us pray cooler heads prevail this night. Who in the West or anywhere else will demand that Iran immediately cease fire? May you live to 200, Michael. The world needs voices like yours. Well, I think that's unlikely. We're going to look for more prayers coming in. Now, again, a pornographer sends a picture. Do you realize how sick the world is that we're living in? Do you realize this is one of the reasons the, the, the mullahs are up in arms because of the perversion and sickness? Do I have to tell you that they don't want this evil sickness of pornography in Iran? What they do when they go to London is another story. Don't think they're so prim and proper. But in their own country, they don't want it. They go to London, they probably have 10 blonde hookers with their dirty, filthy robes. But we're not talking about that. Don't get me sarcastic now. So here we are. We're watching this together. Sky Sources says REF jets involved in defense of Israel. I'm shocked that they can still fly a jet out of England. With the Muslim prime minister and uh, diversity training, I'm surprised they're not flying it upside down and backwards. Okay, let's see what else is coming in here into the uh, savage newsroom here. Nothing, nothing's coming in. Nothing, there's no news. Let's go to some news sites together and see what's happening. I'll go to a site that, and right, on the law, right on the money, Trudge Report, right on the money. Uh, Iran launches drones, missiles at Israel, Operation True Promise, citizens warned to take cover, IDF full alert, USA will support airspace closed throughout Mideast, Sky News Live. This is, you know, you don't think this is a direct result of Joe Biden telling Israel to shut up, drop dead and back off from uh, uh, Gaza? Then if you don't, if you don't see the direct result of the weakness of Biden basically told Iran, go ahead. We're not going to back Israel. Now he's saying he will back Israel. Wh which, which Biden are we talking to now? The one who's about to give a speech and saying I back Israel or the one that told Israel to stop? at all costs, and we're going to withdraw weapons from you. Tell me which which Biden is speaking today. Stabbing rampage at Sydney Mall leaves seven dead, including attacker. Muslim went crazy with a knife, stabs an infant of a blonde woman in a, in a, in a carriage. Religion of pieces, as I said to you 15 years ago. Knife man, they're calling, won't even show his picture. But you could see the video. Swarthy Middle East and are running around with a knife in the mall. Isn't it great being disarmed? What they did to Australia disarmed them. Have you lost the ability to fight back? Do you understand that if you don't stand up, you're going to lose your country, you're going to lose yourself, you're going to lose your nation? It's unbelievable. What's now? IDF, over 100 drones launched. I ran at Israel so far. Watching Sky News. Terror and assault likely to unfold over a number of hours. Sirens across Israel. Now, Biden was supposed to speak. He came out, it looked awful. He looked like he hobbled out of somewhere. How in the world can this nation survive this? I don't know. How could a man of his incapacitated situation run this country? Well, there he was. I uh, try to make a joke of it, but there's no joking anymore. He watched Fox News as Biden to address the nation. There he was hobbling out of somewhere, out of a bed somewhere. So I changed it to a joke. My joke was Biden to dress nation instead of Biden to address nation. That was a joke. Biden changing briefs as Iran launches drones against Israel instead of Biden briefs. You know, it's not a joke. But something I said earlier wasn't a joke either, which was Iran. And this was posted an hour ago before it actually happened. I said, Iran drones a first week strike to draw out Israeli countermeasures. High probability Iran next launches cruise missiles with, which reach Israel in minutes. And shortly thereafter, I wrote that uh, the missiles were launched. The cruise missiles were launched shortly thereafter that. And here we are now. And I read this on my Twitter feed. I have to read this to you from Armchair Warlord. 
He wrote a short explainer of what we can expect to see what happens with this ongoing Iranian missile and drone raid on Israel. It's very interesting, or I wouldn't read it to you. What we've seen launched thus far are dozens of Shahad 136 cruise drones, now well known for having been adopted and widely used by the Russians as the Jeron 2. This is some insider. These are not high performance munitions, but they are cheap, precision guided, and they carry a large warhead, large warhead. Some variants also apparently have reconnaissance and anti-radiation capability. The objective of this first wave will be to absorb, suppress, and destroy Israeli air defenses to open the way for follow-on cruise ballistic and hypersonic attacks. Hezbollah is also joining in with a large rocket barrage targeting northern Israel, which will doubtless contribute to the chaos. Now, here's the interesting part. You'll see the connection. We see this happen every week in Ukraine, and the Russians generally get what they came for. It should be remembered that the Iranians will enjoy the benefit of over a year of detailed combat data collected on Western air defense systems in Ukraine and six months of data on Israeli systems during the Gaza war. As of this posting, I've seen reports of three waves of drones airborne and rumors of cruise and ballistic missile launches, although I personally expect the latter weapons won't show up until the drones have engaged. The, now, who are they firing at? The Iranians may be firing some at secondary targets outside of Israel, not meriting an extensive SIAD effort, or possibly trying to localize high-value IDF AD systems for drone attack. So that was one man's response to my saying this was a feign, the, the drones are little light, lightweight, it's like jabbing. The drones were jabbing in a boxing match, but they weren't the punches coming. But then I saw some alarming stories that popped up, and these have to be taken very seriously. Our CENTCOM commander left Israel, flew out on an on a, on a American Air Force jet. Um, U.S. Air Force KC-135R Stratotanker in Iraq emergency. That's a big story. U.S. Air Force KC-135R Stratotanker declared an emergency while flying over southern Iraq during the ongoing Iranian attack against Israel. The aircraft, which took off from Al Uded Air Base in Gutter, Israel, was in Gutter, was involved in a refueling mission. It's an American Air Force refueler, K-35, 135, amidst heightened tensions, blah, blah, blah. The Stratotanker's emergency was indicated by squawking 7700, a code used to signal an in-flight emergency. This incident highlights the strategic importance of the region and the role of the United States Air Force in maintaining stability and security. Really. Now, just last week, one Biden said to Israel, stop immediately, or we're going to withdraw weapons. Immediately thereafter, Iran planned the attack on Israel because they said, aha, Biden said, go ahead, wink, wink. We're not going to send them weapons anymore. What do you think? They didn't get the message? Now we're waiting for the, the other Biden to come out, who will say we stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel. That's coming next. And meanwhile, it goes on. It all goes on. And here in this country, what's going to happen in this country with the hundreds of thousands of Muslims that have been led into this country under Joe Biden, unvetted, over the border, borders, language, culture, boys and girls, the basics of any nation. He's erased our borders, bastardized our language, and stepped on our culture, calling it every name under the sun. Which Biden will stand, stand up and speak, and when will he speak? What will he say? He'll give a standard a speech. We stand with Israel. We tell Iran to stand down, and Israel should know we're with them every step of the way. That'll make the industrial comp military industrial complex very happy because now they don't have to, you know, get any congressional approval to send any more to Zelensky. Now they can start uh, the, 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 the conveyor's belt rolling with more munitions for, for this now. As long as the weapons manufacturers are happy, Biden will be happy. And so will most of the Republicans. So we're following the news together. Brandon's in the back room getting dressed or undressed or whatever. There's no jokes to be made, and I'm not going to make any jokes. I want to go to prayers for peace again because this is going to get much worse before the, the day is over. It's only 4 o'clock here on the West Coast. The Trump rally at which I was supposed to speak on Newsmax, either the rally has been canceled. I don't really know. I don't really know. I want to give you some prayers. I don't have any coming in yet. I'm trying to go to the prayers. Uh, I asked you to send some prayers for peace. 
That's what we all, maybe if there was a universal prayer, praying for peace, peace would occur. I was on YouTube this morning with a one hour show. I just sensed something was coming today and I, I just changed my hat, not my outfit. I haven't eaten today, really. Just been snacking. Who can eat in a time like this? Going live on YouTube now. Send me messages on Twitter for prayers for peace and comments as I speak. So here we go. Again, you're going to get the people. Gas is $5 a gallon. Time to go fill every car. You, you, oh, you. Oil? Oh, my God. Of course, the big winner here, if anyone's a winner, is going to be Russia because the price of oil is going to go through the roof. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who brings peace to this nation, Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Nations wake up and gather to stop this attack. Pray that we have wisdom for our so-called leaders during this critical time. Pray for the intervention of God. He is needed now more than ever. Pray that many more people walk to Jesus. I pray that Muslims understand and know their punitive dean, their punitive, I don't know, is masquerading as religion, that they convert to a true religion of peace. I'm not a conversion. Michael, how will Netanyahu respond? I read a report earlier. I re Hold it. I have a report coming in on, on a phone. Yes, Bill, what's up, Bill? Where? Where are the prayers? Where should I find them, Bill? Wait, live chat on my oh on my YouTube channel. Okay. Holy Father in heaven, met your will be may your will be done. That one, that kind of stuff. Yes, that kind of stuff. Oh. There's no confirmation any bombs have actually reached the ground. Bill, do you want to be heard or not? No. Okay, I'm going to leave Bill. Oh, hold on, we just we're seeing video coming in. Hold it, Bill. It's Bill is reporting that missiles are reaching the ground in Israel as we speak. He's in the news business, Bill. Yes. And he's telling me, live, live on Sky. we're watching it live on Sky. Missiles are striking the ground now in Israel as we speak. I feel like I'm... They're, the Israelis are clearing, clearing, knocking some of the drones out of the sky. Yeah, but I feel like I'm at Murrah Murrow in London during the Blitz. I'm watching, I feel like I'm watching the Blitz and I'm reporting... Disabled. My chat was disabled by who? I, the Iranians disabled the prayer chat? You didn't hit any buttons? No, didn't touch it. Okay. All right, I'll let you go. Okay, thanks, Bill. So Bill is in the news business, and he's reporting, and he knows what's going on, that some missiles have hit the ground in Israel. And here we are. Pray for the peace of... Keep sending your prayers either to my Twitter feed, or they, they've disabled my comments on YouTube, I believe. No, here they come. If you like this stream, folks, uh, I don't really care. I don't need you to. This is not about tweeting. This is really not about hitting like buttons or subscribing. I could care less. It's about all of us collectively getting our heads in gear and praying for peace before the world goes up in smoke. How's that? Now, there was a report earlier, and I don't know if it's true. That I, I read this one about a U.S. Air Force K. C-135 strato tanker on fire over Iraq. I read that, and it was in a refueling mission. But we don't know how much of these, how many of these stories are true or false. There was another report that Netanyahu was leaving on the Israeli Air Force One and flying out of the country. That I don't know if it's true. He's probably in a bunker somewhere rather than leaving. I doubt he would have the nerve to leave at a time like this. He would never, never survive it if he left. So I don't believe that's true. So you see, this is the problem with social media, is we don't know what's true and what's false. And I'm one of you. I don't know what's true or false right here. I'm watching what live television coverage out of Sky News, which is probably one of the best. I'm watching Sky News on YouTube on my TV. I'm not even watching Fox. They're probably all running the same footage. But I'm seeing the, the, the ground in Israel on Sky News. And they're reporting that some of the missiles are landing. Some have been shot down. These are very bad times. I cannot say to you that I didn't, that I'm surprised by this happening. I can't say to you that I didn't foresee this coming when I was a little boy. And because now you say now he's going to get into one of his things. Well, you know, my friends, I wrote about this in God, Faith, and Reason. And I wrote about a little boy 
running down the streets in the Bronx screaming the world is coming to an end. I don't even want to read it to you. I can't read it to you. It's terrible. The little boy ran down the streets in the Bronx screaming the world is coming to an end. The world is coming to an end. And they declared the little boy mad. They never read the Bible. They never read the Bible where it says your young men shall prophesize and your and your old men shall dream dreams. They didn't know that there was a little boy in the Bronx who was prophesizing. They thought he was crazy because he wasn't like the other boys. And that's the way it was. I feared something like this might happen. And while I was speaking, to be honest with you, if the world came to an end, I wouldn't be shocked with the last vision I had of the earth. I wouldn't be shocked. Shocked. I wouldn't be shocked if Armageddon occurred. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't say I'm totally surprised. When you have this level of corruption and weakness in the West, not just in Biden, England, Scotland, France, Germany, when you have the left-wing fanatics who have shown nothing but weakness and appeasement, and you have the fanatics in Iran who have prayed for Armageddon, if you don't understand the, the, the return of the Mahdi to the, to the Muslim, the fanatical Muslim, I can't even explain it to you. They actually believe that the, see, like Christians believe Jesus will return. Jews believe the Messiah will return. The, third, the Muslims believe that the Mahdi will return, M-E-H-D-I, only after Armageddon. So they've actually been wanting to push the world to this point of a nuclear exchange, whether you know it or not. I'm not saying all of them. But enough of them who are influencing the chief bugaboo there in the black robe sitting in his dirty chair, probably has been whispering in his ear, let's bring it down, man. You know, let's do it now because the West is weak. And if we don't strike now, when are we going to strike? So I wouldn't be surprised what happens at anything that happens. Not at all. So I'm waiting for your prayers. I'm on YouTube. It's live on Twitter through YouTube. It's interesting how that works. And again, I'm looking at your comments. What is this thing about the red heifer? Oh, Biden wants this to stay in power. You know, that is true, but it's not true. It's too soon for the election. This is the thing. If this were happening two weeks or a week before the election, I would say Biden signaled to Iran to do this. But no, it's much too soon to help him. This can only hurt him. It can't help him. It will not help Trump at all either if he keeps talking about him and the stripper and him and the world against him. Even though it's true, it's not going to help him. We need leadership now, not self-serving um, candidates and leaders. We need leadership. We need a man or a woman to stand up and appeal to the world to stop the madness before we're all annihilated. Some of you believe, if you're Christians, that it's the end times. You're out in the fields praying. You could be out in the fields praying. Where is Biden? He's been telling us he's going to give a address the nation. They can't even put a dress on him. It's sad to watch the other day. He gives a speech and he couldn't cut the couldn't get the pen in his pocket. He had to try 10 times. You know what that's like? Like this. If you were Iranian mullahs watching this and the hobbling and the walking and the division in America, the hatred, the anger, the madness. What would you do if you were the mullahs? You'd say, strike now while the iron is hot. Strike while the, the enemy is weakened. And then just the other day, your president told him, we're not going to support Israel. We're going to withhold all arms from Israel. What would you do if you're mullahs? Say, strike now. Now is the time to strike. Our military stocks are low because we've been supplying Zelensky. Rightly or wrongly, we're depleted of artillery shells, God knows what else we're depleted of because we've been supplying Zelensky in our proxy war against Russia. Now, what is this war now? What is this war, this Israel-Iran war? Is this a proxy war as well? Who's playing chess here? Who's playing six-figure, six six-dimensional chess, my phrase, from five years ago, since used many times? Biden's playing checkers. The enemy's playing six-dimensional chess. Who's actually, what's the game here? Where's the game board? You're watching the shadows on the wall. 
Let's see what's in the news. No Biden tonight now? Where is he? As the missiles are landing. No statements tonight. A press lid at 5.13 p.m. was announced. That was a while ago. Biden will not be seen or heard for the rest of the day. Where is he? Called a press lid just before 5.13 p.m. today, indicating that Biden will not be seen or heard from for the rest of the day, making no statement tonight. They, they called it off? Him dressing the nation? I wouldn't be surprised. Where is he? What is a press lid? White House just reported that Biden will not speak. Then it says he will speak. This is leadership for you. He'll make no statement, then he will make a statement, then he won't make a statement. This is leadership? What we needed was a president to get up the minute this started with the missiles on the way, the, even the, the drones on the way, and give a very strong speech to Iran. Either call them back or we're going to launch everything we have against you. We will destroy you if you don't call them back. Instead, he chose not to speak at all. Don't start to me who started this. It doesn't matter anymore. Does it really matter who started this? It's Cain and Abel. That's who started this. There's finger pointing if you want, or you can have sanity and call for peace. I didn't say beat your swords into plowshares. I said call for peace. It's two different things. So here we are. They disarmed the people of Australia about 10 years ago. There he is. There's, there's Biden hiding behind a bush. It's not yet a burning bush, but there he is. No, they showed it from hours ago of him walking behind a bush that was not yet burning. Burning bush. Australia gets disarmed 10 years ago by a psycho-liberal government. They have no weapons. Used to be a powerful masculine nation. And now a Muslim goes on a stabbing spree in a mall in Sydney and starts by stabbing a little baby a few months old in a, in a stroller. And the mother is then stabbed, and she takes a baby. She has the presence of mind to throw the baby to passerbys, who, thank God, caught the baby. Surprised that they were not afraid to intervene, that they'd be arrested for a hate crime for not letting the Muslim finish the job of killing the baby. They could be, they could be arrested for interfering with uh, his holy duty for jihad against uh, Australians who let him into their country to live on welfare. They could do that. Well, my friends, where are we? I had the effort. The news is uh, on. We're looking at your comments coming in. So far, no commentary from anyone in Congress. House Majority Leader Scalise support Israel. How strong that is. God. I don't know. Is this true? Presidential silence? No Biden tonight? Is that a true story? Called a lid at 5.13 p.m., which would have been hours ago? First he hobbled behind the bush, now he disappeared? Oh, my God. Where is he? No address. Maybe maybe he will speak. Who knows? Maybe they can get the colostrum from the, the hippopotami. Broken borders, running out of Afghanistan, leaving behind billions of dollars of weapons. Obama firing our latest drone into the hands of the Iranians years ago when he was in power. And now the uh, coming home to roost, so to speak. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Drone swarm. Biden address awaited. Biden will not talk. Let's go to some of the big news sites. I'm watching Sky News, as I say. It's the same thing. The drones are on the way. The drones have landed. We're trying to pray for peace. Let's see. What could Brandon say? Tell me what Brandon could say. What could Brandon possibly say tonight that wouldn't make him into a, a, a complete hypocrite? I'll give another prayer now. We'll do another prayer. I'll try this one. I, did, I think I read this one. I did the prayer. I gave you the prayer already. There's no other prayer. Prayer isn't going to do anything right now. Nothing. If a man comes to your house with a gun in his hand, your prayers are going to do nothing for you. I told you many years ago, the Israelis learned from the beginning. 
have a prayer book in one hand and an Uzi in the other, or you're going to wind up in a gas chamber. It's the same is true here. I know maybe you think I'm crazy. I've, I've loaded some weapons tonight in my house. You say, what are you, crazy? Way out in California? Yeah, I did. Have you? Have you loaded your weapons tonight? For fear that some of the Muslim hordes may come to your neighborhood and try to burn you down or burn down a synagogue and no one will stop them? It's legal. You're allowed to have rifles. Are you allowed to have shotguns? Everything that's legal, I do. Not everything. I mean, you do what's legal in terms of weapons. That's all. Have a Bible in one hand, prayer book in one hand, and a gun in the other. Get ready. Whether it happens tonight or doesn't happen tonight, Biden has opened the borders like a can of sardines, and the rats have swarmed in. The spiders, the rats, the scorpions. How many agents of Iran or Hezbollah are in this nation right now. Ask Mayorkas. He's supposed to protect us. DHS, where's he? Where, where is that man who runs DHS? Why is he not speaking? Where's Jake Sullivan? Where's Jake Crapper? Where are they? Where are all of these big mouths? They don't have a script yet? They don't know what to say, which side to take? Is that it? I'm looking for another prayer for peace. That's what I'm going to close with tonight. I'm getting tired now. I'm getting really tired of this world. I hope God didn't hear that. He doesn't want me to say that. I'll read another prayer for peace. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe I should read one for the Christians out there. Since there are more Christians than Jews. The world is full of strife and war. This is for my Christian brethren. Lord Jesus, you came that the world might know the peace that you have experienced with the Father eternally. Yet you taught us that in this life there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise against nations as violence works itself out in the world. However, through you, the world may be saved. O oh Lord, send your spirit into the hearts of all men, that the world might know true peace through your abundant mercy. Amen. That's a prayer for world peace from Christians for Christians. That's all there is to it. What would happen if everyone on earth right now prayed for peace? Christian, Jew, Muslim, what would happen? It's never going to happen, but what would happen? Father, even when things seem hopeless, we know that through you we are never without hope. We beg your intervention for a world on the constant brink of war. Beat the swords at the plowshares and cause the lion to lie down with the lamb. Intervene in this world that they might avoid the horrors of war and let peace rule in all lands. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I don't care what the religion is. I'll read a Buddhist prayer if I could find one. I'll read a Hindu prayer. I'll speak in tongues if it had any effect. Father, violence is never the answer. It destroys your good creation and it grieves your heart when people resort to it. Despite the world knowing who you are, they do not know that peace that you can give them. Lord, I ask that you arise and put an end to all violence. Extinguish pain and misery wherever it is found and spread your gift of grace and peace upon the face of creation. Let forgiveness reign and end the bloodshed through Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. Lay down arms. If Israel laid down their arms right now, they lay down for good. It's that simple. My father, may he rest in peace, was certainly not a religious man. He was a realist. Came over as the immigrant, worked his heart out and died, young heart attack, like the grandfather. And he would walk on the streets of Manhattan and talk to me, taught me about life. I didn't know what he was teaching me. I listened, who knew, who knew what went in. And once he said to me something that I remembered. He said, you know, Michael, the Bible says the meek shall inherit earth. You know what the truth is, Michael? The meek shall inherit bullshit. I heard it loud and clear. I didn't quite understand it. Just remember that he said to me. The meek shall not inherit the earth. They shall inherit bullshit is what they'll inherit. Okay. That was the, that was the teaching I had. That was my religious upbringing. He was not a believer in the, in the whole uh, holy roller thing, Jewish or anything else. He was Jewish for sure, but didn't believe in any of it. He looked at it all cynically. I'm far more believing than he was, God rest his soul. He did what he wanted to do the way he did it. 
but I've been uh, touched by God many times in my life, and, and I've been very fortunate to have had God enter my life. I'll read another one for Christian friends, or from Christian friends. Prayer for world peace, hope and lasting peace. Father God, we know that you are the giver of all good things, including times of peace. Yet even amid peaceful times, some seek to cause upheaval and war on the earth. <clears throat> Therefore, we ask that you allow the peace on earth to endure through the schemes of these wicked people. Give us hope in the establishment of your kingdom. Let your peace that surpasses all understanding keep all the earth, all the earth in Christ. Amen. Christians are beautiful people, the believing Christians. I say it over and over and over again. Christians are those who saved the Jews in World War II. And don't think I haven't encountered anti-Christian hatred in my life. I have. And I've stood up to it every time, even when I was younger, I found it offensive. So don't think this is new to me. But I retain my religion because once I was taught, when I was very young, by a rabbi, I asked him, if God is so powerful, why does he need us to pray to him? And this mystical rabbi said, God doesn't need us to pray to him. We need to pray to God. It's like a bell went off in my head. Man needs to bow down to the higher power. They teach you that, I guess, in, in the, the, the alcoholic uh, AA thing. Higher power. You're not God. When you cease to think you're that important, the healing begins. It's only when you think you're super important that you become an addict. Because then you take every insult to heart because you're so important. So yeah, you little man said that to me, I'll show you who I am. See, but the minute you realize you're not so important, then the guy who cuts you off on the road, it doesn't affect you that much because you're not that important. You don't even know who you are. So if he cuts you off and goes like that. You don't have to respond. He doesn't know who you are. It's only when you realize that you're, you're basically humble, that you're not that important, maybe you're even nothing, that you realize what it's all about. But when you're filled with yourself and you think you're important and you're powerful and your words, every word means something, I'm just trying to keep you going right now. You know, I'm not thinking I'm doing that much important stuff to you right now. We need spiritual healing right now. We need spiritual strength. Am I the one to give it to you? I've gone on too long as it is an hour this morning and 36, 37 minutes right now. I'm watching live uh, RAF jets and the lights coming up in Tel Aviv right now. You know, I see these pictures of Tel Aviv as light, light rises over the Holy Land. All of the building cranes in there, all the high rises in Tel Aviv, the beautiful buildings, the cranes, the construction cranes, and you look at the Muslim nations, all they do is kill and maim and teach hatred to their children. And their cities are garbage. There's nothing there. Nothing. Nothing. Ruination through their hatred. Look what the Jews have created in the middle of a desert. And you hate them for creating a civilization? The same vermin who hate America for creating America hate Israel for creating a civilization. They're usually the losers of the world. Losers hate everybody else. Jealousy. A lot of it is envy. The Arabs had the Holy Land before the Jews came back in numbers. They did nothing with it. They didn't grow very much. They didn't build very much. It had been the same way for a long time, hundreds of years. Then the Jews started to build, and the Arabs hated them for it because they made something of the desert. They made the desert bloom. So it showed them who had been sitting there for hundreds of years and did nothing with the land that they had been deficient in their thinking and in their acting. They hated the Jews when they wanted the Jew gone. So they go back to their, their merry way of doing nothing. The same here. We bring in the third world, we become the third world. You fill America with third worlders and they hate the country that gives them a free hotel room. They spit on you. Let me close with a prayer. I gave you a prayer. I don't have another one to give you. Maybe I'll just read a blessing to you, although I'm not a religious man. I don't know which prayer to read. I got all of these prayers. What do they mean? What do they mean? I don't feel like reading a prayer right now. I feel like going out to a gun range. Of course, I won't. I'm just talking metaphorically. I just am sick of it all right now. 
I'm at the end of my ropes with regard to this bullshit that's going on in this world. I'm sick of people coming here and shitting on my my world. I'm sick of these third world lunatic losers telling me that the white man is no good and Western civilization's got to go. I must tell you, I am sick of it. No, I don't see a prayer for you right now. I'd like to be positive. Nope. No daily prayer for you today. Let's see what's going on. The light's rising over Israel where they built a paradise. And uh, Iran, which is a hell. Iran was once, when it was Persia, the, one of the most advanced nations on earth before it was infested with radical Islam. Iran was not originally a Muslim nation, nor was Egypt, but that's that's history that you don't know, and I don't, want, I don't want to bore you with history. It may upset you to learn a little history. When the Shah of Iran was in power, they were the greatest ally of America. It was the largest Muslim nation on earth, Iran. And there were many Jews in Iran, and they were allies with the United States of America. And the Shah of Iran was a good friend of America. And what happened? Jimmy Carter came along. Jimmy Carter undermined through the CIA, the Shah of Iran, drove him into exile. And then after the Shah was driven out, Khomeini came back and instituted radical Islam. Right away, he started killing people, put women in burqas, destroyed Iran, turned it into a 15th century hellhole. Jimmy Carter, years later, admitted he made a fatal mistake in working against the Shah of Iran. You may not remember any of this, but I have a long memory. I don't forget very much. I certainly don't forget history. In fact, I forget nothing. I forget nothing. The Shah was there. That's when Iran was our ally. And when the mullahs took over, they became the world's enemy, the enemy of the world. And here we are. Now we have a speech right now on television by uh, an Israeli commander. You know, and I admire these guys. They're all great guys. But Israel has the worst PR in the world. They can't have a Falasha black giving a speech from Israel. They have tens of thousands of black Jews there from, from that they rescued from Ethiopia, the Falashas, the original Jews. And then they never see them speaking. Well, how about a brown-skinned Sephardic Jew giving a speech? I am nothing against Ashkenazi Jews. God bless them. Why only do we see Israel, only white people, when the world is brown and black? Why? Are they this stupid in PR? Yes. Not that the man speaking is, is bad. He's great. But we're talking PR now. We're not talking about what the words actually are saying. They only listen to me. No one listens to me. You know, what do I got? I got followers. What's the difference how many you have? You know what matters? You make sense to yourself and you pray that some people listen to you and some of them are, some of them are important. And if you can change one life, keep one life from going under to drugs or some violence, keep one person from going off and, and dying or killing somebody, God forbid. You know, it's funny. I had supposed to have been on Newsmax today before the Trump rally, which I don't even know if it happened. I think they went wall to wall war coverage and they were going to talk about the abortion issue. And what I was going to talk about is that how did it happen? I remember I was the first in the media to say to you, the minute the abortion issue came up on the Supreme Court, who was it who said to you, this will undermine the Republican Party for the, ne for the presidential election, will destroy them? So you ask yourself, why would the justices pick abortion then when they could have waited till after the election? So I said, look no further than the law clerks of the Supreme Court because they determine to a great extent, which cases shall be covered. So I looked it up, and I was going to talk about that on Newsmax. So I got this law clerks of SCOTUS, and true enough, it confirmed just what I said. Each justice is permitted to have three or four law clerks per court term. Most clerks are recent law school graduates, really, who have typically graduated at the top of their class and spent at least one year clerking for a lower federal judge. Ugh. Clerks do legal research that assist justice and blah, blah, blah. They draft, by the way, they prepare memoranda and draft orders and opinions. These are the Schmendrick Law students. They, 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 they draft the opinions for the spokespeople, the front, men, front women and men. Now listen to the last line. 
Research suggests that clerks exert a moderate influence on how justices vote in cases, but have, quote, substantial influence in cases that are high profile, legally significant, or close decisions. So I said to you, find the boll weevil clerk or clerks who push this forward on the docket for the Supremes to talk about and draw, draw a ruling upon. They're the ones who destroy the whole chance for a Republican to win in this election. I was right. I was going to say that tonight on Newsmax, so you got it here. Okay, Prime Minister of England just gave a speech. Rush, Sunak, another great bugaboo. I condemn in the strongest terms the Iranian regime's reckless attack against Israel. These strikes risk inflaming blah, blah, blah. Okay, more double talk. I don't like these flowery speeches from these schmendricks. They're all technocrats, lawyers. They don't make any sense to me. So what, what, what's the good of the talk? You think they're listening to him? Because he, what, he looked good in high school? He's still running for GO, this guy. Rushi Sunak still thinks he's running for a, a, a Playboy model. His mother probably fells over him where he came from. What else is in the news? There's nothing. Nothing is in the news. I think I've concluded. What I'll tell you is this. I'm going to take a break. I've been on with you again now for now 45 minutes today. I did some prayers for you. I prayed for peace. I ran launch that. We served the same thing all day long. So far, there's no breaking news about <clears throat> any counter strikes. No Biden, uh, the great leader of the free world. CNN now saying Biden will not talk to the nation. He probably couldn't get it together. You saw him wandering in behind the bush. He looked like he was bewildered. They woke him up in Delaware somewhere on vacation. I got to talk tonight. It's a Saturday. What do you want from me? I'm off. I only uh, five days a week. What do you want from me? It's Saturday. I don't want to work. You got to work, Mr. President. I don't want to work. Man, I, I did stuff this week. I, I, I don't want to go. You got to go. I don't want to go. Jill says, Joe, you got to go. I'll dress you. We'll give you your ice cream. You'll be on a helicopter. Only a couple of minutes. You'll give a little talk. It'll be fine. Then we'll have the little devil come up and speak after you and curse anyone who asks a question. And they'll be afraid of her because she's a black lesbian. Okay, I'll go. So they wheel him out. He comes outside the White House behind a bush. Everyone gasps. I don't believe this man. And then he probably crapped it and you know, fell apart. Couldn't do it. They probably gave him a try. All right, test it out now, Mr. President. All right, there's the fake podium. Let's go. There's the speech in front of you. Three, two, one. They got the guy from Hollywood. God, give it a shot. Let's see what it's going to sound like tonight. The minute he started, uh, cut, he's not going on tonight. Get him off, get him out of here. Announce he's not doing it. You think that didn't happen? That's all. That's the story. That's the news story. Two hours ago, he was speaking. Then an hour ago, he's not speaking. They gave him a cut. That's all. He couldn't do it. Couldn't read uh, past the first line. This is leading the free world. As I said to you, there's not a Caribbean nation on earth, the smallest Grenada, that would have him as a prime minister this sick. They'd say he's too sick to be prime minister. We'll replace him, the assistant prime minister. As bad as she is, at least she can talk. All right, so she giggles too much. All right, she's more fanatical than he is. All right, she's a stone-hearted racist. But at least she could talk? Who's this one talking with that face on, on Sky News? This one's a real yenta. I don't know where this face came from. Another Ashkenazi out of Israel. Where, where do they get these people from? They work their way up. Worst PR in the world. You can get a good-looking falasha to speak or an Arab, Jew. I, I don't understand. It's a, a Jewish. It's crazy. You got Sephardic Jews who look like Yasser Arafat there. They don't have him speaking? Biden's Iran war warning to Trump flashback. Forget that. I don't want to read that stuff. What am I going to do tonight? I'm only going to watch the news anyway. I may as well stay on with you. Watch Sky News. I'm watching it with you guys. I'm watching it as we speak. Let's go to some headlines, see if there's anything new that you haven't. Trump to address nation soon at his rally. Okay, there we go. Well, at least to address the nation in place of Biden. Let's see the news headline. Okay, we looked at the drudge. Sirens is the same headline, nothing changed. Netanyahu says we'll respond in kind, nothing new. 
stabbing, stabbing rampage at Sydney Mall. The West must remember how to fight. It may already be too late. What's that article? The West must remember how to fight. It may already be too late by Zoe Strempel. Ugh. I can't read this. I just can't even. I don't want to read the article. I'm not on talk radio. That's filler. That was a filler thing to do is read an article. You make yourself sound smart. Well, you know, like everyone else, you get tired. You don't know what you're talking about. Iranians celebrate after attacking Israel from all sides with suicide drones, missiles, and rockets. They're dancing in the streets. See, they're happy. Look at those pictures. It's Iran's first ever direct attack on Israel, and photos emerged Saturday night of Iranians celebrating in Tehran. Now, they're not genocidal, of course, according to Hillary Clinton. They're not genocidal maniacs. Israel is. Trump blasts Iran's attack on Israel, claims it would never happen if I were president. True. Ten-year-old Israeli boy first reported injury of Iranian drone onslaught. Teens assault attempt to rob Uber driver at gunpoint while filming New York City attack. Those are your minority teens. They're on a rampage across America. You know, the teens, the teens. So there's not any new headlines about Let's see what Breitbart says. Love that, love that site. Launches attack here on a filler. Will Israeli take out her? Now, that's what I asked. Will Israel take out Iran? Now, I asked this earlier, and I was kind of attacked for doing so on Twitter, and I didn't say do it. I'm a free thinker, so I asked it because it's a probability. And what the likelihood is, is I don't know. But I asked this a couple of hours ago. Let's see what I asked. Here it is. It was two hours ago, Michael Savage at a Savage Nation. Should Israel launch a nuclear strike on Iran's poisonous mullahs and end the world's scourge of radical Islam for good now? I got a lot of responses, some good, some hateful. And I had to say to them, they say, are you crazy? How even, why even say it? All I answered was Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nothing else. That was my answer when they called me crazy for even asking the question. I said, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Please shut up, they say. I said, Hiroshima. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The other one says, nobody wins with a nuke. Oh, really? We won with two nukes. Study your history, Schmendrick. It sure stopped the Japanese uh, Imperial Army from going on rattling their swords. Israel will use nuclear weapons if they're backed into a corner. It's called the, the Solomon something or other. The Solomon decree or something. It's the last resort. Trump had the Abraham Accords. Jews sat down with the Arabs. They made peace. And you, you leftist bastards, call him a Nazi and a Hitler and, a, and everything you could. You lied about him everywhere. He made peace between Jew and Arab, and you called him every name under the sun. You called him an anti-Semite. Look what you did to this world, you, you evil doers, you. You left-wingers are the truly evil scourge of this earth. Everything you touch turns to mad. Everything you touch turns to filth and degeneracy and garbage. You did it to this world. I saw stories this morning. My head, I thought I'd seen everything in my life. Footage has emerged of the attacker who stabbed multiple people, including a little baby at a shopping center in Sydney. There he is. See him? Swarthy Middle Easterner with the big knife running around. Look at him. Look at him running. If he's not a Pakistani immigrant, I'd like to know what he is. Then earlier I saw something that's so disgusting, even I didn't want to publish it. A gay politician in Spain has abruptly resigned from his post after photos began to circulate showing him eating his own feces. Daniel Gomez del Barrio was a counselor with the governing left-wing party. Eating his own feces. You hear this? Spain was once a great nation until the socialists stole the country from the people. God, faith, and reason, I wrote, has become Marx, hate, and treason after only three years of Biden's tyranny. I expect that to be stolen by one of the uh, talkers soon. Marx, hate, and treason. There's a new title for a squeaky. Squeaky will be on it tomorrow with the publisher. Where's the Oval Office address? Did he really cancel it? Can anyone confirm that he canceled I don't see it. Maybe my, my pantomime is true, that he did give a tryout. He flopped. It's possible. Where is he? 
No, 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 no sign. I mean, is not go to a friendly Biden site? Wouldn't you think a president should speak at a time like this? The country's scared to death. People are terrified that the world's coming to an end. Where is he? Where is this guy? What is a leader for, a leader? No, nothing. You go to the SF gate, Coachella, you hear they're talking about. A bunch of drug addict, degenerate scumbags. Coachella headline, it brings out two extremely famous guests. Coachella is just like the uh, dance festival in Israel before the, the, your friends in Gaza killed, slaughtered their men, women, and children, and, and raped the women. Not one thing, not one word about what's going on in Israel or Iran and SF gate. Not one. Storm that's pretty unusual. What restaurant went out of business in San Francisco? Eleanor Coppola, wife of Francis Ford, passed away at Barry Home. Okay, my blessings go out to 87. She was older, huh? She was an editor for him. He hasn't done a good movie since The Godfather. Great movie. Died at 87. God bless her. Died young. I remember they used to say that when I was a young guy. I used to laugh. A man passed away at 75, they would say. Oh, he was so young. I used to laugh at them. I was a young guy. Now, now that I'm an older guy, he is too young at 87. How long can you go on? Died at a family home in Rutherford, California. Well, God rest his soul. She's a nice woman. Met him as directorial debut, the Roger Corman produced horror film, Dementia 13. God, that was a crazy movie. He had two children, blah, 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 whatever. Oh, I don't want to talk about that firstborn, John Carlo. Didn't that the kid who get killed with the rowboat? Yeah, killed while riding in a boat piloted by Griffin O'Neill's son of Ryan O'Neill was found guilty of negligence. What a death. Can you imagine having a kid chopped up on a friend's motorboat riding in a boat piloted? They, they Even they couldn't get that right. The kid fell off the boat, and the moron running it ran over him with the propeller and chopped him up. And God, the father went on. He didn't crack up. The other son directed his own movies and collaborates with Wes Anderson, president of his father's San Francisco-based film company, American Zoetrope. They produced nothing. The daughter produced nothing. They were glorifying her, Sophia. When she appeared in GF2, the people gasped. I'm not knocking her because she's not good looking, but when she came, we all sat in that theater. It was a 70 millimeter theater in Corte Madera. We all sat for GF2 after Thanksgiving and the scenes opened and then she comes out the, the whole theater went, oh, because homely, homely, why put her in a movie? She was, you don't put her in because she's your daughter. Got somebody who's like theatrical. Anyway, the mother died. Yeah, it's not sad. People die. I'm reading about the wife now. Okay, at, as France is preparing a long plan, self-financed epic metropolis. That's a bomb already. Premium next month at the con film. A uh, uh, stiff. I've heard people that walked out. They didn't know what he was doing. They gagged. This is what happens when you don't have any outsiders listening to the same with politicians. Whether you be Trump listening to your advisors and no one else, or Biden listening only to your inner circle or no and no one else, you start talking to yourself in a in a tunnel, and all you hear is you smell is your own breath, and you hear nothing. You don't know what's going on outside you. So if you're a film director, then you're producing bad movies. If you're a president, you're producing a bad, a bad nation. Okay, no news about the Middle East here. I'm, I'm doing news. I shouldn't do it, but there's nothing new. Direct strike, and they're celebrating, as usual. The Muslims are dancing in the streets like they did here after 9-11 in Jersey City. Should have deported them all right then and there. Yeah, I said that, right? Right in there. Anyone celebrating, get them on camera, throw them out. Sirens. Are, nothing new on Drudge. Nothing new anywhere. Nothing. Everyone's sitting and waiting. And not one word from uh, U.S. military shoots down Iranian drones targeting Jewish state as warnings ring out. Okay. Watch live coverage. We're watching live coverage. The Islamist regime reportedly follows drones with ballistic missiles. I predicted that would happen. I think it's only the beginning, by the way. Talk about movies. There's another article. I have to throw it in. Jane Fonda declares climate change manifestation of racism, misogyny, and patriarchy. She's in, she's a lunatic. 
She was always a crazy leftist. Now she looks like a crash dummy from a, a horror movie with big lips, a saggy face, crazy eyes, and a, and, a, and a gray wig. Now she's saying climate change is a manifestation of racism, misogyny, and patriarchy. Go ask the uh, Aleuts or, uh, if there's climate change, because there isn't. Some areas have never had such ice packs in history, Jane, you more on you. Another one lives in a bubble of L.A., Beverly Hills. They all talk to each other, the Enters. They get so skinny and emaciated as they get older that their nylon stockings like fall off their legs. That's a mark. You see, ever see the women when they get old? The nylons hang on their legs. They lose muscle tone. That's what Jane Fonda looks like, a human like calf muscle that's losing a nylon stocking. And she's giving a speech now about climate change. Barbarella is now an expert on, on climate science. I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a roll. Okay, border crisis. You haven't seen anything yet. Okay. I think I've covered the waterfront here. There's absolutely no new news that you can't get yourself with one click. Iran attacks Israel one day after Biden says don't go into Gaza. Iran on Friday launched an attack on Israel a day after President Joe Biden warned Tehran not to. Don't, Biden told reporters every last Thursday what his message to Iran was after a threat to attack Israel. We will support you. They really took him seriously. They sent him a th three boxes of the pens with Iranian markings on them. There were reports that Biden would address the nation from the oral office, but the White House then called an end to it at 5.13 p.m. Eastern time. I told you what happened. We saw him hobbling past the bush. They gave him the speech. They said, give it a shot. Then the little monster, little the black, the black lesbian, and another one. Who really runs the press office? The fake admiral or her? The loudmouth... Uh, or, her, or him. What's his name? Admiral Kirby? A real genius that one is. They probably, all right, test it out. Let's see it again. Go ahead. Mr. President, you're up. And he has to look at Jill. See, so he got up. They, they hobbled him up in there. All right, turn the cameras on. Let's see how it look. Go ahead. Mr. President, read it. Go ahead. Whatever he said, or if he could say anything, maybe he couldn't even speak. It was Saturday. Maybe it's a Sabbath. Maybe he's secretly a Jew. I don't know. Maybe he was on a... On a Sabbath break, maybe it was his, his Shabbos. Maybe you're, few, I don't know, he didn't talk or he blew it. All right, cut. Well, he's not going to put a lid on it. He's not going out. No excuses. Don't tell anyone anything. But how can we do that? We could do whatever thing we want. People will take anything in this country. Just shut up and get out of here. Y'all could do anything you want. That's all. That's what happened. Let's go to the Jerusalem Post and I'm knocking it off. I'll come back later. I'm not going anywhere tonight. Israel closes all schools. Old news. Body of missing teenage shepherd found in West Bank. Oh, I don't want to read it. What they do to bodies. They butcher them. Uh, oh, it's awful. This poor little boy. Benjamin Amichar. Was he a Druze? 14-year-old boy from Samaria. Samaria. A shepherd. He can't be Jews. Jews aren't shepherds anymore. That was biblical. So he's got to be, he's got to be a, uh, a Druze. Cause of death being a terrorist murder. Due to the national movement, the murder, the murder, the murder handed over to Shinbet. Okay, another terrible story. It's war and death and murder and destruction. There's no news. I'm sorry, I can't give you a, a... He was Jewish, the shepherd? I'm not joking. The kid, they was butchered. I didn't know Jews became shepherds. They all want to become like tech geniuses. Why would he be a shepherd? Still no report of anything going on in Israel on the uh, SF gate. Nothing, nothing. There's still reporting on Coach Schiller. Avalanche in Yosemite sounded like a bomb going off. What happened to my local newspaper? I used to have two newspapers I liked. Rite Aid plans to close 18 more California stores, including two in Bay. No kidding. Letting the teens go in and take everything they want. How can they stay in business? I, I went into Rite Aid the other day. All the shelves are empty. Surprised you could still get a prescription in there. I hope they're not closing mine down. Where are they closing them? Chapter 11. No kidding. Close to be Chapter 11 because of the teens who are robbing the blind. White wrote San Jose. That doesn't touch me. 
another at Union City. Two Sacramento County Rite Aid stores are also on the list. I don't live there, so I don't. It's not in my backyard, and I like my pharmacist Joe. The chain is also closing stores in Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia. Highest number of closures in California. Thank you very much, California legislature. You've exterminated another chain, a wonderful chain. You've exterminated another set of businesses. That should make you very proud, along with your Marxist agenda. You worked them out. Good. They're gouging the people. Well, you go make the medicines, you idiot. You moron, you. You don't even know what an organic compound is. Okay, there's nothing else left to... Uh, I'm waiting to see something happen. There's nothing happening. It's like waiting for a show to begin. As much as I hate to say it, I'm, I have nothing more to say. And as the Arabs say, if you cannot uh, improve upon the silence of the desert, do not speak. People are asking me questions. I say I'm live on YouTube. Even a friend doesn't even know. They don't even watch YouTube. People in my own family don't know I'm on YouTube. Live on YouTube. Okay, maybe they'll go watch it now. Nothing new. It's over. What, they shot off a few fireworks just to show that they're going to do it, and that was the end of it? Uh, is it? Can we all go home now? So they had to do something to appease the fanatics? Or is it going to get worse? Okay, four teens robbed another jewelry store in Beverly Hills yesterday. Got away with 300000 in jewelry. The other day, a group of teens in Oakland, California, teens, teens, a fancy way of saying you know what, to 13%, busted into an Asian-owned uh, jewelry store in Oakland and broke every showcase and robbed everything. The owners were elderly uh, Asian people. Phew, God. Middle East sent his new... I don't think maybe it's over. Maybe they just wanted to show, to rattle a saber. They, were, they showed they could reach Israel. Maybe that's what they wanted. You think it's over? Can I go home now? I mean, the president didn't speak. Maybe I could stop speaking now. The president said he's not speaking. Went in, failed with the screen test. They said, all right, put him back in bed. Jail, come in here. You did fine. You did very nice. We got it on tape. Don't worry about a thing. It'll all be fine. And he went back. That's it. Went back to the, and they took him back in the helicopter, the plane, and the, he's back in the Delaware asleep. He feels better. Mm, great nation, really sensitive. You know, we got a real true man in the White House, a real true man in the White House. We went from true man to no man in just a few short decades, from true man to no man in the White House. Okay. Let's see. I'm watching Sky News lights up in, in, in Tel Aviv, RAF jets, and nothing. All right, I think it's over. The Mullahs fired off a few missiles to show that they were able to reach Israel, and they backed off. You think it's over, or they're waiting for the next the next launch of something? I can't imagine. Let's see what happened. Did oil you can't oil stocks didn't go up because you can't you can't bet on oils like betting oil stocks. You can't do anything on a Saturday. They're all closed. I'm not in the stock market. I have nothing. Oil and gas. One day ago, there's nothing going on right now. You can't even bet right now. I don't bet on the market. I know people do. I don't even know how anyone could live like that with that pressure. Oil. How much is oil a barrel right now? Oil cost. Okay, let's see. How much is oil a barrel today? Oil cost on Google. Crude oil prices today. I wouldn't get it today because they can't gamble today. And, of course, Biden should close down even more refineries tomorrow because he has a genius in the energy department. Ah, oh, putz, that one is attacking light bulbs now. A moron. U.S. oil and gas boom poses challenge to climate goals. Fuck. I mean, I didn't say that. Climate goals, you schmucks, you. You idiots, you. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Study the... Uh, you know what I'm going to say? The Vostok ice core samples, idiots. Yeah, go see what the record tells us. See what you, you don't believe, let's say, in, 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 the, in religion. You believe in the science of evolution, you genius liberals, right? You don't believe in, in, sci in, in, in religion. You believe in science when it comes to evolution. 
So why don't you believe in the science and look at science of the Vostok ice core samples, which I wrote about in Government Zero, and see what the the ancient record shows us, what the Earth's temperature was many, many thousands of millennia ago. You morons, you, you idiots, you hysterics, you. Well, nothing. So they're not, they're, they can't speculate today. Oil prices, how about home heating oil? U.S. grid capacity could go up. I'm not in, in the oil thing. I don't, maybe I should start speculating. I know so much about, po you know, politics. Why don't I say, I know what's coming geopolitically. Shouldn't I be speculating? No. Because I don't need the money. I don't want to do it. I'm not one of those guys who needs more money tomorrow. What do I need it for? I can tell you what certain things are going to happen, but you know that it's all controlled anyway. Even your smartest person on earth, you're not you're not Soros manipulating the uh, the mark the markets, whether it be the you know the currency markets or the oil markets, lumber, pork bellies. There are people who control that. Okay, I think we got nothing more to say now. Watch live. Trump addresses Iran's attack on Israel and rally. All right. So everyone listening to me just turned off. They went to Trump. All right, go to Trump. I'm going to sign off now. You want me to sign off because I'm going. You got Trump now. You can go to him now and listen to him. No, I don't play the lottery. Never bought a lottery ticket in my life. I, I swear, never. I'm not a gambler. I had a gambling phase when I was 11 years old. That's when people gamble. Some get stuck in it. I never did. I even bought a roulette wheel for my house in Queens. I swear to God, I used to have roulette games in the basement. The croupier hat, the eyes. I put down the green felt thing and I had the kids put up nickels. I loved it. I thought it was so much fun spinning it. I went through the phase in a year, year and a half, it was over. And it's like a masturbatory phase for boys. You're supposed to get over it. Some people get stuck in it, boys and girls. It's a sexual something or other, a gambling. I don't quite understand it. I went through it at 11, 11, 12. It was over in a year. I don't know where that wheel went. It'd be like something. Uh, all right. I've said all I'm going to say, by the way, this was ad free. I knew this was too important. I did want to see ads for Joe Biden or for, uh, uh female sanitary products in the middle of, uh, my, my talk about war and praying for peace. There's nothing more to report. If God forbid things should get worse and I have the energy, it's five o'clock here on the West coast. I've been with you for another hour. This is two hours today on YouTube. I will come back. In the interim, pray for peace. Peace is patriotic. And may God save America from the scourge of Joe Biden and the psychopaths around him who led us to this day.